Hello, I'm Hans Parchment. You're watching Talawa TV with Crystal Davis. Golden Ricketts, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. How are you? I am well. You've made my night. Before we get started, please go ahead and big up the greatest parish in Jamaica. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot. So um, I'm going to big up St. Thomas because I was born there. Yes. And I'm also going to big up St. St. Andrew because I grew up there. I love that. I'll take that. 14.94, game's record. Um, you weren't playing about tonight, were you? No, I definitely knew that the girls were coming out here to fight, so I had to bring my A-game and war them. What got you going? Was it the cold or was it something else? It's the cold. I like competing in the cold for some strange reason, but then after the first jump, it, I feel like it got even colder and then the breeze started changing, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> what next? What's next for you in terms of achievement? Because this is your greatest career medal, isn't it? Yes. Um, apart from the World Championships, yes, this is my first um, gold. gold. So um, what's next? I have the Monaco Diamond League next week and I'm also going to be participating at the NACAC Championships in Bahamas. Amazing stuff. And how does it feel to inspire the little kids in St. Thomas? Because I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them with their eyes gripped to the screen saying, I want to be like Golden Ricketts. Yes, definitely. I hope to be an inspiration to them. I hope they see themselves in me. If them foot long, them can try to try the triple jump. You know, if them slim, them can try the triple jump or even high jump. What if them have short foot? If them have short foot, then can try to cast about with foot short too. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. Thank you. All right. My Talawas, how are you all? Good evening. Is it a good afternoon? Possibly a good morning. All depends on where you're based in the world. I need to do a quick little check with you guys. I'm boiling up, but I don't want to disturb you guys with the sound quality. So I'm going to turn on my fan. All I need you guys to do is tell me if you can hear it. If it's too loud, I will turn it back off. Hopefully it's not. How does that sound, guys? Is it too loud? Let me know in the comments section. Um, good day to you all. If you're making your way home from work, I hope that you arrive safe and sound. Like I said, if the fan is disturbing you guys, um, let me know in the comments section and I will turn it down. The headline reads for itself. You don't want to read it. I'll go ahead and read it for you. It says, Rugga Girls Set for South Korea Friendly. So that simply means that the Riga girls have arrived in South Korea safe and sound, um, gone through their initial warm-ups, um, also gym session, had their chill day, and they are edging closer and closer to the kickoff against South Korea, which will be played on September the 3rd. I'm going to turn this off for the time being because you guys aren't letting me know if it's too loud. I have a feeling it might be too loud. Um, so feel free to let me know in the comments section. As I was saying, um, the reggae girls are edging closer and closer to match day one. It's actually the only match day and possibly maybe the only um, match day that will be um, available to us, given that the second match against South Korea will be played as a practice game behind closed doors. So I want to try and bring you all up to speed. And by that, it simply means that I am going to be giving you guys another um, read of the press conference, which is a little bit outdated now. But if in case you have been out the loop, as it relates to the women's senior, senior team, senior football team that is of Jamaica, I'm going to do my best to try and bring you all up to speed. Um, so let me go ahead and give you a little brief um, reading of that press conference. Then we're going to um, get into um, a video of the Don, um, Lauren Donaldson. Quite short, probably no less than 60 seconds, if that, um, talking about uh, what the camp is all about. And by the camp, I'm talking about the current reggae girls camp. Uh, if you're not aware, they are currently in South Korea gearing up for their friendly against South Korea. So we're going to um, get into that and we're going to get into uh, a couple of other bits before I close off on the show. As ever, I'm going to try and make it short and quick for you guys. I doubt that that's going to happen, but I'm at least going to um, give it a go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn on the... Um, shared screen and we're going to give that press conference um that press release i should say i wish there was a press conference we're going to get into that very shortly um that press conference that i have been begging for we still haven't received it yet guys don't ask me why but we've still not received that all important um press conference with the don lauren donaldson 
So um okay, so let's go ahead and have a little read of the press release. Bear with me quickly. You guys probably can't read this one on screen. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and read it, read it out to you guys. All right. So to save you the bubble and to save you the time and the press release again, um, the top half is definitely outdated. So ignore the top half. The top half is um, pr pretty much the same thing that's written in the bottom um, press conference uh, is a reflection of the initial um, sorry, press release. The second press release that's highlighted is a um, reflection of the first press release. So they're pretty much, pretty much um, like for like. All right, so this one read as follows. You guys really need to let me know in that comment section if the fan is disturbing you because I need to turn it back on because I am hot. I'm feeling the heat right now. So I'm going to read the uh, press release for you guys. And it says, Coach Lauren Donaldson and his coaching staff have selected 23-member squad to represent Jamaica in an international friendly against South Korea on September third so what day is it it should be september the first in south korea now i think the girls are about i think they're like nine hours ahead of me in uh, london i need to double check that because i think they are actually um a full nine hours ahead of me um so either way it's definitely a brand new day for them so it should be september the first so they've got two more days until match day so let me continue on with the reading um so they'll be playing against south korea so etch this one down in your diaries uh this one should be played on saturday at the hasong sports complex in south korea the game is scheduled to begin at 3 a.m jamaica time 5 p.m jamaica uh local the girls will also engage the same op opposition in a practice match on September the 6th. So like I said, two games will be played um, in this international window, guys. One is the friendly against South Korea, which I'm hoping will be available for viewing purpose. The second match, which is, again, a practice match played on the 6th of September, don't hold your breath with that one because it's probably going to be a struggle. If I'm being honest with you, both games is probably going to be a struggle to watch, to view. But we're going to try. We're going to try and see if we can um get any watch along going and at least take the game in for ourselves. I don't know. At this point, I'll even do with listening in on a radio. Hopefully, it's not that bad. <laughs> but um, we'll see, guys. We'll see uh, what happens. So let me finish off that press release there for you guys. The call-ups reflect a strong unity, sorry, a strong unit with the majority being players of the World Cup qualifying squad. A few of the more popular names are missing from the list through injury. As part of his stated policy, the coach, which is Lauren Donaldson, will be using the opportunity of this and other windows this year to look at others to look at other players who were not involved in the recent World Cup qualifiers. Four players of those names are yet to be debut uh, are yet to make their debut for the team. The possible debutants are Cameron Simmons, Leah Brooks, Siobhan Wilson, and Malia Atkins. The squad and the technical staff are scheduled to assemble in Hasong on August the 30th. So this has now long gone, um, no longer relevant to us. And I'm guessing you guys are probably wondering what is the squad list, right? So if you've not been watching the program for the last two live streams, shame on you all. Um, but I'm going to play nice and I'm going to give you guys another little overview of the um the squad list so we can all have a little quick read but before i get into that let's go ahead and remove the banner so you guys can see it for yourself clearly and this is how the squad list looks guys and you would have already if you have been watching the reggae girls quite closely judging by the squad list you would have noticed that there is a few um names there regulars that aren't part of this current camp again you did. You should have heard it in the press release there that some players are unavailable due to injury. Also, I would probably say that there are probably also a few players there like Jody and possibly um, Kiki that have college commitments, college or university commitments, hence not being part of this current squad. College and uni comes first, books come first, so it does make sense. So the list, if you haven't already read it out, I'll go ahead and read it out for you. It says between the sticks, we have Sydney Schneider, 
uh, Yasmin Jameson, Leah Brooks. In defense, we have Chantel Swaby, Alison Swaby. So that's the Swaby sisters, Big Swaby and Baby Swaby. We also have Vian Sampson, then then Blackwood, Siobhan Wilson, Malia Atkins. In midfield, we have Chinalu Asha, Marlo Sweatman, Drew Spence, Shania Hales, Giselle Washington, Tierney Wiltshire, Shade Adamulican, and Tiffany Cameron. And to complete the line in the forward position, we have Khadija Shaw, Kayla McCoy, Mariah Gray, Atlanta Primus, Trudy Carter, and Cameron Simmons. So um, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that you guys are more than familiar with your team, familiar with your regulars. If in case your memory is not isn't great, isn't where it should be, isn't where you want it to be. I'm going to give you guys a gentle reminder. A um, couple of the players that, that are unavailable um, for this current camp is Rebecca Spencer, Havana Salone, Paige Bailey Gale, already touched on Jody Brown, um, Satara Murray, Jade Bailey, Alika King, Kiki Van Zanten, and also... Sashana Campbell as well, to name a few. And that is just players there from the last couple of months following up to the Reggae Girls qualifying for their second ever World Cup appearance. And they've done so um, two times of asking. First time qualifying back in 2018. And four years later, they've gone ahead and done the same exact thing. Two times on the bounce. Couple returns there from this for this current camp. And you should have picked up on it already based off the announcement, the team announcement. So you'd have seen the return of uh, Tiffany Cameron, Marlo Sweatman, Giselle Washington. And also somewhat of a reintroduction of Siobhan Wilson and Shania Hales as well. You guys are awfully quiet. Don't do this to me again. You guys were quiet on the last live stream and you are um, incredibly quiet again on tonight's live stream. So if you are watching, do go ahead and um, drop a comment in the comment section. That's what it's there for. I promise you I don't. But if you want to come on the live stream, then let me know in the comment section and I'll drop a link in the comment section. Or if you want to call in, then you can go ahead and call in on the number um below and if you are going to call in do you call in with the number as it is written in front of you so call in via whatsapp there's a reason for that that's to avoid any potential charges so do you go ahead and call in um exactly as the number is written on your screen so do your plus four four followed by the remaining digits all right so we're going to um I'm not going to waste no time with you guys um tonight, meaning I'm not going to be wasting your time. I worded that poorly. I'm not going to be wasting um you guys' time tonight. So I'm going to um dive into things and just dissect one or two things and keep it moving. And then we're going to um close off. Um, okay, so let's see if I can bring something up for you guys. I need to send something to my screen uh quickly. So bear with me. Um that was all right, quicker than expected. So some of you who are pretty active on social media probably would have seen Lauren Donaldson's um comments there as it regards to this camp and the purpose of the camp and so on. But if you haven't seen that video there from the gaffer Lauren Donaldson. Now is your moment. I'm going to give you a chance. All right. Theo, how odd. You popped into my mind um, today, Theo, earlier on. Um, how are you? How are you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you. It's good to see you in the comments section. How's your week been? How was your weekend? I haven't heard from you in um, some time. I hope you're in good health. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and hear from Lauren Donaldson. And then we're going to keep it moving. This trip is just about getting some new players in with some some of the old veterans and um, we're trying to narrow it down. And this is one of the windows that we're going to use to try to narrow down um, our squad for the World Cup and looking at some players and um, hopefully we have some success with this. But again, it's going to be hard competition. People are fighting for spots. So using these windows efficiently as possible 
our players, new players and older players and everybody competing to make the World Cup team. So coach, um, have you gotten of all the players been in and what has it been so far since your arrival? Well, you know, every, everybody's here, you know, which is good, which is maybe, maybe the first time we have gotten everybody in on time, I think. I mean, traveling wise, I can say it's been very, very, very efficient. This is just the first leg, okay? Hopefully the second leg of the travel, when we leave here, it can be just as good because I'm smiling now because for the first time, I think we have got everybody in on time. Okay, coach. So, um, thanks and we'll talk to you as the event goes on. Thank you. And hopefully we can play hard and get some results. Thanks, coach. <laughs> Oh, gosh. Um, Lauren Donaldson loves a sucker punch, doesn't he? Um, okay, so from that, what I've gathered is, and you guys can formulate your own opinion, let me know in the comments section. Be be interesting to know what you guys make of um, what Lauren Donaldson has um, said in the video that I have just shown to you guys. Um, let me know your thoughts on the gaffer. I think now it's pretty safe to say that he's a permanent permanent head coach being that when he came in he signed on a interim basis my key takeaway I want to know what you your key takeaway from Lauren Donaldson's um comments there he pretty much reiterated what was said in the press release didn't he? he told us about the purpose of the camp and so on but my key takeaway from that um is his last final comments and I laugh because I just found it funny, but really and truly, it's not funny, is it? Um, so what I'm gathering based off the last camp. So when I say last camp, I'm talking about when Lauren Donaldson um, came into the fold and on a short term basis as our interim um, gaffer. And now, judging by where is the video? Where is my favorite picture? Judging by this picture here, I think it's safe to say that he's now the full time gaffer. Right. So as I said, guys, I've gathered again based off the reintroduction of Lauren Donaldson to the present that there is somewhat a distrust between the Jamaica Football Federation and the coach. And I'm saying that because you guys should have been paying attention. You would have picked up on a couple of stuff that's been said by the gaffer Lauren Donaldson in the last window a um, couple of the stuff that he was clearly frustrated about uh, and he echoed his frustrations and rightly so um, was in relation to visa and um, documentation paperwork issue basically the usual right when it comes to uh, Jamaican football and though the final hold up um, was in the hands of FIFA, it appeared that Jam the Jamaica Football Federation played a role in the initial handling of the matter. So maybe starting off the process for the um, players who had their paperwork held up at the time. So one or two of those players, for example, uh, Jade Bailey and Satara Murray, right, for the last window of the um, World Cup qualifiers back in July. Is it July? Yes, it's been over a month, well over a month since we played, since the regulars played their last um, game of football together. It seems like it's been much more longer than that. I don't know, maybe I just um, miss seeing this squad play. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. So yeah, Lauren Donaldson, with every right, um, as he is the person in charge and he should be supported, he should be given the right tools for um, success. Like I said, echoed his frustrations back then. And we also knew about the whole luggage situation, don't we? Um, when our captain, ahead of the Colorado camp, our captain, Khadija Bunny Shaw, paid, guys, paid for the luggages from Jamaica to Colorado. So um, I'm going to play back that little video there from Lauren Donaldson. And it kind of seems like that's what he was alluding to, um, the final bit there. Maybe he's talking about the itinerary because he did say um, this time round as it relates to traveling and arrival, traveling and arriving. Um, it appears that it was smooth sailing, but I know he's not holding his breath because he probably knows um, the type of people that he's dealing with and so on. So based off what um, the, the gaffer, the Don has said in recent press conferences, 
again in the last window since his reappointment up until the present up until now in this latest video clearly clearly there's some distrust there between the gaffer and the federation be interesting if someone could tell me different because i'm convinced that um trust isn't on the table so i'm gonna give you guys another listen i'm gonna let you guys um listen to Lauren Donaldson, and then we're going to keep it moving. Apparently, it's on my screen already, but I think it's actually behind Lauren Donaldson's um, photo. So what I'm going to do is just remove the gaffer quickly, and then I'm going to give you guys another chance to um, listen to his comments. Again, it, it, it is pretty much repetitive of, of what was said in the press release. Hardly any difference to what was stated in the press release. It's just that it's coming from the horse's mouth himself. But yeah, my key takeaway was his final comments. I thought that was, um, whilst I laughed, Laughing for all the wrong reasons, guys. It's serious matter that we're dealing with. Like you said, he's smiling now. He's happy now. But who knows if he's going to be happy when it comes to um, the all-important departure from South Korea. So let's just give that a listen once more. And then we're going to um, move on to my um, next point. Yeah, Lord Donald's now. Um, this trip is just about getting some new players in with some, some of the old veterans. And... Um, we're trying to narrow it down. This is one of the windows that we're going to use to try to narrow down um, our squad for the World Cup and looking at some players. And um, hopefully we have some success with this. But again, it's going to be hard competition. People are fighting for spots. So using these windows efficiently as possible for our players, new players and older players and everybody competing to make the World Cup team. So, Coach, um, have you gotten, have all the players been in, and what has it been so far since your arrival? Well, you know, every, everybody's here, you know, which is good, which is maybe, maybe the first time we have gotten everybody in on time, I think. I mean, traveling-wise, I can say it's been very, very, very efficient. This is just the first leg, okay? <laughs> Hopefully the second leg of the travel, when we leave here, it can be just as good, because I'm smiling now, because for the first time, I think we have got everybody in on time. Okay, coach. So, um, thanks, and we'll talk to you as the event goes on. Thank you, and hopefully we can play hard and get some results. Thanks, coach. <laughs> so, yeah, guys, um, that was Lauren Donaldson's um comment whilst in camp with the senior women's um national football team of Jamaica. For those of you who are wondering, that is the Reggae Girls. This is this is pretty much um where our the next phase, I should say, not the journey, the next phase or the next part of our journey for um, going down under. When I say down under, you should already know that I'm referring to Australia and New Zealand. That is, those are the two host nations for next year's FIFA Women's World Cup. So this is where the, the journey continues, guys. Um, it's great to have a friendly in the bag. And it's a friendly that's come at the right time in an international FIFA window which basically means that all players are eligible to be called into camp if you don't see a couple of your favorite it's probably because they need to be rested probably because they have university college co um, commitment or they might be um nursing a niggle here and there nothing concerning um it gives you an opportunity to look at other players and see who could add to the all-important squad depth do I play football? No, I do not. Good day to yourself. I can't to save my life. I said it so many times. No, I don't play at all. Um, good to hear that you're good, Theo. And like I said, good to see you guys around. You're busy. You're. I could tell. I figured, but it's odd because you literally popped in my mind. It's funny because I was doing a clear out of my media um earlier on, and I came across the video of when you first came on the show. And that's how you popped into my mind. Um, I, don't worry, I didn't delete that video. It's still on my phone, but that's how I managed to think of you. Night Rider, interesting name. All the girls going to don the Adidas kit in the friendly. No, they're not. They're not. Um, that sponsorship, that um, brand, that, um, what do you want to call it? That Adidas deal, um, Adidas will be our next kit supplier there guys so those of you who are wondering so the adidas deal that you're referring to that actually comes into play early next year in january so 
for the time being, we still belong to Umbra and the girls will be wearing their Umbra kit proudly until further notice. So no Adidas yet. But if you want an Adidas kit, there is an Adidas kit out there that's available to you with the Jamaican colors. So you can go ahead and um, buy the, the latest Arsenal warm-up jersey since you want to put on a Adidas and Arsenal, sorry, Adidas and um, Jamaica um, colors. Go ahead and buy the latest Arsenal jersey. Um. All right. So again, guys, let me know what let me know your thoughts on Lauren Donaldson's comments. I'm going to keep it moving. I'm gonna move to my the next part of my conversation. And I'm trying to try, I'm gonna try and see if I can get this wrapped up within the hour. Let's see. I managed to do I managed to um do exactly that in the last live stream. And I also had a couple of extra minutes to um spare with you guys as well. So Let's see if we can do a repeat of the same. So as I said, from that video there, the one that's currently on screen, from what I gathered, although it is still positive, um, and I'm going to stick with the positivity, there's one or two negativities there to, um, um, to talk about, uh, but I'm not going to talk about it for now. I'm going to read the room, and things seem to be positive, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay on that trajectory with everyone for the time being. But um, again, my key takeaway from Lauren Donaldson's comments there is that it just seems that there's a distrust between federation and coach. And you can probably um, gather that that would be the case or that is the case based off a couple of the stuff that the gaffer have stated in the last um, string of press conferences at the World Cup qualifiers um, in the CONCACAF Women's Championship. All right, so another thing that I am so annoyed, I'm not even going to um try and hide it from you guys. I'm annoyed because I've been saying this time and time again, when are we actually going to be properly, properly introduced to the gaffer? And by the gaffer, I mean um, Lorne Donaldson. And it actually begs the question of asking really and truly what's going on. I don't know about you guys, but that's not how you do things. That's not how you do things, whether you're um, a properly run federation or not, whether you're amateur or not, it doesn't really matter. When you have a head coach, be it a head coach that comes in on an interim basis or a full-time basis, be it at club level or at the international level, you're supposed to be introduced to them. And by you, I am referring to the, the 12th man, the media are supposed to be introduced to him. So they missed it the first time round. And you're wondering, anyone can make a mistake, but when you're in a professional setup, um, you shouldn't be making those type of mistakes. That is bizarre. Um, I'd like to say I'm shocked, but in reality, I'm not actually shocked because we have a way of just scraping the barrel. We have the we have a way of um operating with a third world mentality. Whether there's any intent behind that, um, I don't know. Only the Federation can answer that one. But I just find it so odd that you missed the introduction the first time round when the gaffer was brought back into the fold where he was named as the interim head coach. It appears that now that that contract has come to an end and he is still there, he is still um, the captain of the ship. He's now taking charge of the team in their first game post um, qualifiers outside of the CONCACAF Women's Championship. And yes, it is a friendly um, Lauren Donaldson um, taking charge of the team that even then, I'm guessing that this means that he is the full time coach. Right. Because there's no way you're going to be giving him a um interim contract i don't think he would even sign that so he must be the full-time coach um taking us into the world cup and then post world cup we see where we go from there looking ahead to a possible um olympic appearance and so on so you would kind of think that at some point between then and the present that we would have had an introduction with the gaffer but for some unknown reason that isn't the case and I'd like to say that it's one that screams on professionalism. Um, again, operating off a third world mentality. I'd like to think that that is the case. Or it could be something else. Could be something a little bit more sinister. I don't know. I can't speak for people 
um unfortunately I, I, I don't work for the federation so i can't speak for them but it's just odd that we've still not been given an introduction to lauren donaldson and let me just give you guys a gentle reminder that this wasn't the case when we had the former gaffer at um coming through on an interim basis um Vin Blaine. Vin Blaine was brought through on an interim basis. Paul All was brought through on an interim basis. And we both had um, press conferences with those head coaches. Yes, one can argue and say that that was at their request, but you could also argue and say that because they requested it, they have then laid out the template. That is, that is how you operate going forward. And you shouldn't even need a head coach to request a press conference. I don't know if... Um, uh, Paul Hall or Vin Blaine request, requested a introductory press conference. At the time, it was a talking point because it was so uncommon that they were appointed and almost immediately after their appointment, we had a press conference. It was like breaking news. People were like, what's going on here? There's a press conference stage. Do you see how bottom of the barrel we are, guys, that people get excited when you have an introductory press conference for a newly appointed head coach? You see how third world that is? And I've been waiting patiently because now and again, people say to me, um, what do you think of Lauren Donaldson? And I'm just like, I don't actually know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you about um, Lauren Donaldson because it's unfair to judge a person when they're in a surrounding that is pure pressure. I can't tell you um, about Lauren Donaldson based off speaking to him in press conferences or post-match conferences in the last from the last um work of qualifying window because he was surrounded by pressure so that is not a fair um environment to make a judgment call on someone it's just not um it would be unfair and it just wouldn't make sense um so i kind of just thought that yeah again guys i just think it's it's just odd and i've been scratching my head and trying to figure out why is that in case you guys forgot about the Vin Blaine press conference. I'm going to go ahead and um play just uh, maybe a couple of seconds of the Vin Blaine press conference just to re-jog a couple of your memories because some of you might have forgotten that we actually were properly introduced to Vin Blaine and Paul Hall, but we have not been properly introduced to um Mr. Don and Miss Mr. Donaldson. I don't know what why that was or why that is. Maybe you guys got an invite to the press conference and I didn't. If you got an invite, let me know. Maybe I've missed something. I don't think I have missed anything though, because I have checked on the Jamaica Football Federation and I've not seen anything. So I just find it odd that we've not been given a proper introduction. We missed the ship the first time round and we've missed the ship again. So at this point, I'm gonna say that we're not going to get a proper press conference and the reason why I keep banging on about it because it's so important that is your moment where the fans the 12th man and the media um, are presented with the opportunity to get to know their um, gaffer their head coach their manager outside of a works working um scenario so outside of the usual nine to five that is your opportunity to feel him out see what he's all about make an enough analysis make a um observation on his per uh, personality and so on right now i can't really even tell you what his personality is all about because it's it's difficult to call so what we're going to do is just have a quick little listening on the Vin Blaine press conference. And we're going to um, keep it moving. I'm also going to touch on you guys there in the comment section, not ignoring any of you. But um, let's see if we can go back over. My shared screen set is on, but I can't see it. Where is it? Okay, let's remove... Let's remove um, Lauren Donaldson for the time being. All right, and let's... Good. You guys should be able to see this. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Earl Bailey, press officer of the Jamaica Football Federation. And this morning, we have the distinct pleasure, as me, you too, of speaking with the head coach, the new head coach, the old head coach, the new head coach of the women's national team, Mr. Finn Blaine. Welcome, Finn. Welcome back to the program. Uh, thanks, Earl. Good to be here. Uh, in, in your own words, I mean, of course, you, you, you've been... So, 
you guys should definitely get where I'm going with that, right? Um, again, um, you saw how the press officer there, that's Mr. Earl Bailey that you guys were listening to, gave a warm introduction to the then interim gaffer, Vin Blaine, said it was, um, we have the, a distinct pleasure. I would like to have a distinct pleasure to be in a press conference or not even be in a press conference, just to know that there's a press conference out there where we have the distinct pleasure of listening to Lorne Donaldson, of knowing what Lorne Donaldson is all about, knowing his, it's one thing Um, you can say that, why don't you go and read about Lorne Donaldson? Well, I don't want to have to do that because that's not the right and proper way of doing things. He's supposed to be introduced to the 12th man and the media as I've read reiterated on a number of occasions and um like i said you want to know his personality you want to know what he's all about can't judge a man when he's um placed in a tense environment tense scenario it's not the right time to be making a, a judgment call or doing up your your match analysis or your um press conference analysis whatever you might want to call it because um, it just doesn't make sense. So, yeah, again, it was great that we had um, two separate introductions there, one for Paul Hall and one for Lauren Donaldson. Don't ask me why we've not been given a press conference for um, Lauren Donaldson, because I don't have the answer to that. Only the Federation could answer that one for you guys. But, again, I just find it odd and... Um, yeah, we need to do better. We need to um bring some consistency to the table because it's little stuff like this that tells me that we're just not we're not really we're not we're not doing what we should be doing. Lack professionalism. And it's if if we if we sit back and just accept um these um poor pattern of behavior, what's going to happen is it's going to um develop into a bigger problem. So whilst people can sit and probably say that, well, you know, it's just a press conference, um, by not giving us the press conference, an introductory press conference, says that you lack professionalism. You probably lack professionalism in, in other um, areas of your work and you're, you lack professionalism because you're, you've been allowed to get away with it because there's no one there to hold you account to hold you accountable. So you do the small things wrong and you get away with it. By the time it comes around to doing the larger jobs, the more important jobs, you're probably not going to be able to get that done because you're so used to complacency. Um, good evening to you guys there um, in the comments section. Guys, I think I'm going to have to turn back on that fan. Let me know if you can hear it. I am boiling up. Can you guys hear the, the fan in the background? Please tell me that you can't hear it. But <laughs> No, seriously, tell me if you can hear it. And if you can hear it, I will um turn it off. Good day, Mr. Reed. How are you? Mr. Campbell, good day. Good day. Federation. That's what I think. That's what I think. That That's exactly what I was thinking. And, you know, it's not down to, um, let's see if you guys can hear it. Nobody's telling me if they can hear the fan yet. So I'm assuming you guys can't hear it. That's exactly what I'm thinking. I'm thinking because he hasn't requested a press conference to be introduced to the media and introduced to the 12th man, he hasn't been given one. But it's not even down to his request. Even if he didn't want to do the press conference, he should be literally told that he has to do the press conferences because that is the right and proper way of handling business. That is how you go about your business. That is how things get done um, in the world of sport. And it's not just um, football. It's across sports. Anything to do with um, team sports, anything to do with where the, the manager um, is in charge. You're supposed to be introduced to your manager. You're supposed to be introduced to your head coach and so on. But for some reason... We have been made to sit and wait. I'm going to say don't wait no more because I don't think it's going to happen. And to be honest with you, the ship sailed some months ago when Lorne Donaldson was brought back into the fold. The ship has sailed again now that he has been made the permanent head coach. I keep saying he's been made the permanent head coach. I've not seen anything to say that he is. But based off that smile of his standing next to the president, in case you guys have missed this one, I'll bring it back up for you. Based off this smile right here, that's not a part-time smile. That's not an interim smile. That is a full-time smile, meaning that he's in the job for the long run. And even then, it's, it's, it's actually... <laughs> It's so crazy. I don't even want to think about it because it is so crazy um, that if he is the um, permanent 
uh, head coach. Where is the press conference? I don't know. Let's see what you guys are saying. Accountable to the um, yeah, the government don't have anything to uh, do with it. No idea. No idea. I, mean, I wonder if himself and the realize that if he fronts up to the media, he's likely to say certain things. Lauren Donaldson has already given a couple of um, sucker punch here and there, to be honest with you. So if they're pulling him away from the media for a sinister reason because they don't want him to table transparency, he's already done that in post-match conference. You can probably stop him from doing an introduction um press conference but you can't exactly prevent him from doing a post-match conference or a pre-match conference that's outside of your control he has to do it you literally it has to be done so um you can't hear me is it because of the fan i think it might be because of the fan just why i keep telling you guys you gotta work with me you have to tell me if something's bothering you you gotta let me know if the fan is too loud um let me know that the fan is too loud. Anyways, I've turned it off, so I've turned it off, so it should be all right. Uh, so I'm going to go back and read the rest of what he's likely to say things that will show up the JFF a bit like Scott Parker. He's already done that. That's so what I said, um, um, Richard. He's already done that from the last from the last string of post-match, um, pre-match and post-match conferences in the work of qualifying windows as it relates to the the CONCACAF Women's Championship is spoken. He's spoken out. He's spoken out. So you can pull him away from the media as best as you can if that's what they're doing. But at the end of the day, um, what's going to happen when he's in the post-match conference or the the, the pre-match conference? You can't you can't tell him what to say or what not to say. It's just it's not going to work. Good day. I still believe there is um one hundred percent. Well, you can feel it. You can feel it. That's why I had to laugh when Lauren. Sometimes when he says certain things, the only thing I can do is just laugh because you know exactly what he um what he means. You know what he's um alluding to, and so on. So that moment there, I'm gonna play it back just in case some of you missed it. Play back this um short video of Lauren Donaldson and basically. Uh, he's reiterating what's been said in the in the press release um, as it relates to the current camp, the purpose of the camp and what he's looking for and so on. But my key takeaway actually came from his final comments. And that's why I'm saying that based off the last camp, the last um, reggae girls camp and the World Cup qualifiers to the present, clearly there's a distrust there between um, the gaffer and the federation let me give that another spin for you guys who are just tuning in and would have missed um the video because now um, this trip is just about getting some new players in with some some of the old veterans and um we're trying to narrow it down and this is one of the windows that we're going to use to try to narrow down um, our squad for the world cup and looking at some players and um Hopefully we have some success with this, but again, it's going to be hard competition. People are fighting for spots, so using these windows efficiently as possible for players, new players and older players and everybody competing to make the World Cup team. So coach, um, have you gotten, have all the players been in and what has it been so far since your arrival? Well, you know, every, everybody's here, you know, which is good, which is maybe, maybe the first time we have gotten everybody in on time, I think. I mean, traveling-wise, I can say it's been very, very, very efficient. This is just the first leg, okay? Hopefully the second leg of the travel, when we leave here, it can be just as good because I'm smiling now because for the first time, I think we have got everybody in on time. Okay, coach. So, um, thanks, and we'll talk to you as the event goes on. Thank you. Hopefully we can play hard and get some results. Thanks, coach. So how 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 poor is it that your head coach is probably sat there holding his breath thinking, will it be smooth sailing for the duration of our journey? Can we all make it back to our respective country of um where the girls play their competitive football for their clubs and so on? Can they make it back to their respective countries? without any hiccups because that's pretty much what he's um alluding to 
when he's um talking about the itinerary, um, everyone arriving in camp safely in the nick of time. Is there going to be any more luggage issues when it's time for the, the um departure? I don't know, are tickets going to be available for the girls? Are we going to have any issues with the tickets, um, plane tickets, that is, and so on? Kind of have to just watch this space. But um, yeah, that was my key um takeaway. Someone asked about Kanye. Um, Kanye, the answer to your question is on Kanye's Instagram. So if you head over to Kanye Plummer's Instagram, you will find the answer to your question. Um, Rito, the coach is bringing in the U twenties and into the yeah. Um, it's giving them a fair chance, isn't it? And it's good to see because it's no secret when you watch the underage group. Um, you can see that there's a few girls there that should slowly be making the transition into the the senior national team. Um, maybe not straight away, maybe not right away, but they should at least be getting the odd. Um, opportunity here and there to prove themselves because last time we took um the um the baby face assassin to the world cup and when she was at the world cup qualifiers um, as it relates to the conquer cup women's championship she was the youngest um player in our squad and she won the um young player of the tournament award so it does work once you've got the talent I think if you're good enough to play you should play and that also works for um not the girls but also the women in our team as well I think irrespective of whichever league you play in if you're good enough to play you should play I'm gonna take a quick little um break and give you guys a little look at your team um in South Korea if you haven't seen this video already um here's your chance to see your team um looks as if let's have a look at this one together they were arriving at the stadium. I don't know. Let me know what you guys do. This one looks like they were arriving at the stadium. So, yeah, it must be the stadium. That definitely looks like a stadium. Don't quote me on that. But from my eyes, let me know what you guys think, actually. But I'm going to say it looks as if they were um, arriving at the um, stadium. Because I did notice a couple of the girls were posting pic um, videos literally inside the stadium. So this must have been on arrival. Um, and I take it this is where they'll be playing. The friendly against South Korea. And in case you're wondering what tonight's show is all about, the headline reads for itself, Riga Girls All Set for South Korea Friendly. In case you have been in the dark, um, what it is is, let me bring you guys up to speed. We have a camp taking place at the moment with match day one. We have match day one and we also have a practice match against the same country, so against South Korea. The game itself, the friendly itself, will be played on September the 3rd at the Hosong Sports Complex. Um, three days later, September the 6th, we have a practice match and that is scheduled to be played behind closed doors. So the likelihood of us catching a glimpse of that is probably looking incredibly slim, but we should at least at the bare minimum um, hopefully, by the grace of God, we can actually tune into the friendly on the 3rd of September. And it should be the 1st of September now for the girls. Um, I believe they are nine hours ahead of me. I'm based in the UK, so I think they're nine hours ahead of me um, in South Korea. It is officially Thursday for me, three, three minutes past 12 a.m., here in London. So it's officially Thursday, one step closer to the weekend. So in Tuesday, two days time, um, it will be, oh my God, wow, it is September the 1st already. It's actually just knocked me, guys. September the, wow. It's not really an important month, is it? The best month um, that matters is next month, October. 
But anyways, I'll enjoy this month this month as much as I can. Um, any of you that's born in this month, um, happy birthday when it comes. It's not exactly the greatest month, but yeah, shake a leg or two. So in two days time, guys, um, that will be September the 3rd. That is where we'll be playing South Korea in Aura Friendly. Let me know what you guys think of what's been said so far. I am nearing the end of the show. I did say I want to try and wrap, wrap things up within the hour. And it looks like I'm about to do that. Been talking at you guys for about 49 minutes um i'm coming to an end good evening how are you good day good day oh i haven't even done it yet guys i'm wearing one of my um favorite hoodies see if i can stand up and show you guys i'm wearing one of my favorite hoodies um says deluded dg and it says i should say people what does it say guys i can't even people i'm back i think it says i'm trying to read this upside down so basically um this is for um dg deluded guna check out his youtube channel he's one of us um jamaican bayesian and he talks football incredibly well um one of my favorite youtubers to listen to when it comes to football uh, particularly Guna, so the name is a dead giveaway, isn't it? He's an Arsenal fan, but he does cover other teams as well, completely unbiased, um, which is actually quite an incredible thing to do when you're a football fan. Um, so yes, one of the best there is in this industry, trust me. So check out his, um, check out his YouTube channel. You're definitely not going to be disappointed. Um, he's excellent. Trust me on that. All right. Another one that I have since he's um entered the entered the chat. See if I can um I've actually shown you guys this one already, and it's actually um one of my um if I can zip it up. See if I can zip this one up. One second, guys. Uh, let's see. I'll be with you guys in a second. See if I can um zip it up for you guys. <clears throat> this one got a lot of wear last year. This got a lot of wear last year. What does it say? It says Reggae Boys Nation. You can tell it got a lot of wear because the name are rub off, guys. So I might have to get myself a new one at some point. But that one is um for ryan lfc um so yeah two of my favorite hoodies and i'm sure they're gonna keep me warm this winter as well good day to yourself how are you how you doing all right guys so we're gonna um wrap the show up soon but if you want to call in you are more than welcome to call in the number is on the screen and please get dial in as it says on the screen with a plus four four followed by the remaining digits and let me give you guys a another gentle reminder of our squad i have no idea why you guys are so quiet um you've been quiet on my last two live stream i don't like it guys i like when you guys are um having a conversation with me or with the guys in the comment section whatever floats your boat all the time, bro. All the time. Big up yourself. Um, okay, so let me give you guys another um, gentle reminder as to how the squad looks um, for the, the squad list, that is. For those of you who are wondering, let me remove the video from behind it as well. And you guys can go ahead and give this one a read for yourself. If you don't want to read it, I got a better idea. I'll go ahead and read it for you. So the squad list for our South Korea game won a friendly, um, which will be played on September the 3rd. Three days later, September the 6th will be the practice match played behind closed doors. And um, so the squad list reads as follows. Between the sticks, we have Sidney Schneider, Yasmin Jameson, Leah Brooks. In defense, we have... Um, baby Swaby, that is Chantel Swaby, and Big Swaby, Alison Swaby, Vian Samson, Den Den Blackwood, Siobhan Wilson, Malia Atkins. In midfield, we have Chinalu Asher, Marlo Sweatman, Drew Spence, Shania Hales, Giselle Washington, TNA Wiltshire, Shade Adamulakun, Tiffany Cameron, 
And up top in the forward positions, we have Khadija Shaw, Kayla McCoy, Mariah Gray, Atlanta Primus, Trudy Carter, and Cameron Simmons. So that is how your squad list looks, guys. So those of you who are wondering um, how we're looking. So it's a good combination there of um, age and experience, isn't it? Youth and experience, I should say. Um, which you can't complain. Um, it's good to see that a couple of the youngsters will be given the opportunity to prove themselves. Also good to see the recall of Tiffany Cameron, um, Giselle Washington, Marlo Sweatman, a bit of a reintroduction of Shania Hales and Siobhan Wilson as well. <laughs> um, good day. How are you? You cover all the main points in a balanced manner. Hence, there is no reason to add or challenge. Oh, thank you. I was worried about this earlier on because I was like, I don't really want to rock the boat. Like I said, there is something more negative that I want to touch on, but I'm not going to do it. Um, but yeah, um, Lauren Dollison um, gave me something in that video and it kind of confirmed that I just needed to just share my opinion with you guys because I've been thinking about it. I've been thinking about it long and hard. Um saying you know what i am so sorry i've been telling you guys to call in but guess what i didn't open up the line if it wasn't for mr beckford i just made that is that is a silly error i am so sorry so if anyone tried to phone in earlier on i apologize that was all me you didn't do nothing wrong it was all me um but yes going back to mr campbell's comments yeah like i said the gaffer said something in um in that video there that's on the jamaica football federation social media and it was pretty much confirmation to just um share my um opinion with you guys because it just don't make sense it didn't make sense when he was brought back into the fold and we didn't have a press conference with him he has clearly clearly been reappointed and it's, it's not an interim contract i can't see him signing an interim contract well you never know this is what i'm saying i don't know lon donaldson pretty sure that he um loves jamaica dearly so he probably would sign another interim contract but who knows the length of his contract um, is he going to be here post World Cup? Could he potentially be here for um, uh, Olympic qualifiers, uh, possibly qualifying for the uh, Olympics, and so on? Who knows? These are the questions that should be asked in a press conference to the nation. But we've not been given that. So for me, that is something that I've been speaking about since um, Lauren Donaldson's reappointment, and I'm still having to speak about it. And at this point, I don't think we're going to be getting one. I can't see where we'll get one anyways. Um, and another thing that um, um, JFF does as well, which I just kind of feel it just screams um, on professionalism, like, please, like, stop giving us um, press releases, end of play. Like, come on, guys, if it's um, 4 p.m. Jamaica time, I trust that that's sometime between 4 and 5 p.m. That must be end of play for you guys, right? As it relates to the average person if they're 9 to 5, making their way home from work. There's no point giving us a press, a press release at end of play in Jamaica. If it's end of play in Jamaica, what time do you think it is across the pond or in the UK or elsewhere in Europe? Like, please stop giving us important information at end of play like let's act like professionals and stop operating in this third world mentality it's so irritating it is so irritating guys nothing more irritating than when you finish work and you look and you see there's a press press release or better yet when you worse yet when you finish work and you're about to go and put your head down on the pillow and you see that there's something there that you need to address or there's a story there that you need to go and write it's it's unprofessional like let's do better the world is watching, just like they were watching when we were in, when we qualified for the first ever Women's World Cup in 2018. They're watching even more so now. Let's take ourselves serious. You can't expect the rest of the world to take us serious when we're acting like a bunch of amateurs. Like, come on. Mr. Beckford, how are you? I'm doing fine. You? You sound better. How's, how's COVID treating you? I'm well. Well, I'm, I'm getting much better. I, I don't, I don't feel like I have it still. Yeah, you'll be back in work. You'll be back to work better. sometime soon, then. 
Hello? You'll be back to you'll be back at work sometime soon then. I think there might be something Sorry. wrong with the can you hear me? No, it's breaking up. Um, okay, I'm gonna hang up and then I'm going to call you back, okay? Okay. Right, let's try recalling um the Beckford, they did just call us, guys. So let's see if we can um return the call. <sighs> let's see. Yes, is that any better? Yes, so I'm hearing you. Okay, um, I perfect. don't know, probably it's my phone. Uh, no, it's okay, it's all right, it's all right. It does sound Sometimes much better now, though. Mm. Yes, the phone is kind of giving up a problem. You said <laughs> what do you make of what's been said so far? Well, I didn't catch much because um, I still haven't getting. I still am. I'm not getting any notification still. Something you, you two around, is toying about around, with you. with with the with my life. I don't know why, but they're toying about with it. Um, it seems so, and I don't know why they're doing that to you. <laughs> I know I've noticed that a few of my regulars end up missing the live stream because um they're not being notified. So I don't know what's going on, but uh, hopefully it will change soon. I'm upset because what I notice, I get notification for some other um YouTubers that I don't really um watch that often. So yeah. I don't know if it's because I always want to catch a show YouTube is kinda um <laughs> creating a roadblock. YouTube is behaving like the opposition. Then they're, they're not on our side at all. <laughs> They're the way teams, but hopefully it will improve. Yes, hopefully. Um, probably I will see if it's I will know if it's my phone is it or our YouTube when I upgrade. So yeah, I just want to stick it out for now. But I'm missing too much at times. I just have to rewatch it. At least you rewatch it. You don't have to. I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, but I always want to make use of the calling and advise my opinion because I always enjoy the show. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this is your opportunity. You can. Is there anything you want to discuss, even if it isn't, uh, even if it hasn't been said? Um, could you reiterate what um the main what the show is really about this time in regards to the regular girls? What's the latest? Okay, um, that's a good question. I actually bring up the um the the uh headline so others can see. Miss Brown, good day to yourself. How was work? So basically, it's actually about um the camp. So I'm pretty sure you know by now that reggae girls are scared or set to be playing against South Korea in a couple of days time, um, which will be played on September the third. Uh, so today's video is actually about letting you guys know that they've arrived safe and sound in South Korea. They've also taken their first uh, training session, light work stuff, a um, couple of um, gym work, also had their chill day. And we also touched on with the, um, the last two live streams that it's almost um, certain that a few of the players will be feeling a little bit jet lag because of the distance of traveling, right? So you probably have to factor a couple of things into um, consideration as to why they started off with a light training session. Completely, completely expected um, that they would start off things on a lighter note. And then I'm, I'm assuming day two, which should be now, should be today, because they are nine hours ahead of me in the UK. So I'm assuming today they're probably, today will probably be more intense than the first training uh, session, if that makes sense. Well, I guess so. And, um, I understand your point, which is, I, I agree, there would be some players that, would have to travel from afar because um, what I realize there are different places um, in different leagues across Europe. Yeah. So, yeah, they're going to be jet lag. It's a good thing to go light on the first session, but I guess they would pick up in the second. Yeah. Um, it seems like things are going well so far, but knowing JFF, I don't really expect after 
much good news. But let us hope for good news because I realized recently the highways left our players stranded. Yeah. <laughs> some some <laughs> embarrassment. Uh, why they just can't do the right thing and done? That's why I was laughing with what Lauren Donaldson said, you know, paraphrasing, saying that, um, good day, uh, Miss Pan Panton. Is that how I pronounce your surname? I could try. I can send her a screenshot of your request and um ask her to to um accept. To be fair, I don't think it's personal because it took forever um for um Giselle to accept my friend request. So I don't think it's personal. She pop I don't think she used Instagram that often, to be honest with you. So I can try for you, but um I don't think there's definitely nothing personal. Um but Based off her social media movements, I'm going to say she don't use Instagram as often as we would assume she used Instagram. So, And also, um, with your friend request, you can imagine how many hundreds of other people probably tried to friend request there. So she probably just haven't seen your friend request. But hopefully she will and um, give you a approval. Um, yes, Mr. Beckford, um, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so we're talking about I'm sure about um, the arrangement <laughs> made in regards to the, the, the tickets and so on. Yeah. We should know. He realized what is happening and he, he, he's going to have doubt. He Everyone does have doubt. doubt. There's a the distrust. And he there is 100% a, um, a, a distrust, 100% a distrust between the Jamaica Football Federation and um, Lauren Donaldson. Otherwise, he wouldn't be speaking the way he's speaking. Even if he isn't saying, I don't trust them, his words are quite telling. That he's saying, you know, well, I'm laughing now, but pretty much um, when it's time to go home, is he going to be laughing? Is Bunny going to be expected to, to pay for the luggages again? Are the tickets going to be um, giving the green light for the girls to board their flights and so on? So it's interesting that, you know, he's in camp. He has more important matters to be concerned about. But in the back of his mind, he's still thinking, are we going to be good to go when it's time for depart for um departure? Seems like that's what he was saying with his with his um comments. Yeah, and it's, it's, this thing is so bad for football growth. I mean, you as a coach should be focused on your um, players' preparation and, and how the team looks and um, going like because in con in press conference um we it's that's why. Press conference is so important because we as the fans want to know uh, what's the state of mind with the team and is everything going in the camp, is there any latest injuries and so on. And when you have a coach um, being asked a question and he still tries best to answer to smart them but to give those, you can clearly see that he's having those. It's not good because they're distracting him from the main thing, which is preparing the girls for an important game. 100%, 100%. It's just one of those things that's added to his list of to-dos that he doesn't need to be worrying about. Like the itinerary isn't the job of the coach. It's not, the itinerary isn't something that Lauren Donaldson should be worrying about. It's not an issue that, Bunny Shaw should be worrying about. None of those players or the backroom staff should be thinking, am I going to be able to leave South Korea on time? Because that will then, if they're not able to leave on time, that could potentially have a knock-on effect on their arrival um, for their club activities. Because we know a few of the girls have already started um, competitive football for their clubs. We also know that as it relates to the WSL, so the top flight of women's football in England, that's to be started pretty soon. I believe that actually the season kicks off on the 10th of September. Bunny playing on the 11th. We have Drew Spence and... Um, Rebecca Spencer is scheduled to be played on to be playing on the tenth and so on. So people need to be the players need to be back with their respected respective clubs without any hiccups, and that's probably something that, that the players themselves are um pondering over. Yeah, and that that, that really will affect your game plan as well. Your game plan distraction. Uh, And this is basically logistics. It's logistics doesn't have anything to do with the players. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are people put in place. If the girls continue to pee from their pocket, then they are basically what? What are the chances of them um, using football to make um, a living? Because most of them are professional players. 
players. Exactly. Exactly. They, they can't pay them, pay them because they always have a cash issue. And most of the girls are, are not even uh, worried about if Jeff is not paying because when they are playing, they are, I wouldn't say they are getting a um, long sum of money, but um, they realize the issue and probably many of them won't uh, complain much about Jeff is not paying them because they have too much excuses. Mm hmm. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, it's something for us to definitely keep an eye on. And like I said, um, Lorne Donaldson loves a sucker punch here and there. And he's been handing out a couple sucker punches since the last um, the last international window. So the final stretch for our women's um, World Cup qualifiers. And he's done it again in, <laughs> in the yeah. first window post uh, World Cup qualifiers. So it makes me laugh. But at the same time, I'm appreciative of that level of transparency. Sometimes someone don't really need to tell you exactly what's going on. It's just down to you to read between the lines and put two and two together and say, okay, so that's what they're um, alluding to and, and so on. Well, it's, yeah, and I like the fact that, um, well, I wouldn't say it's hiding the, the truth, but he's trying to be as professional as he can in spite of the circumstances which he's in. That's another thing. I don't know what are the, if it's like we are in doubt as to is the head coach going forward because mm -hmm. the last time I hear is interim. So what is going on with this announcement? Because we are in the, um, let's say, in the, so long we are in um, limbo as to if he's the coach going forward or is, is he going to be replaced? I don't, we don't hear any announcement from JJ. But that's why that, I was saying, yes, Mr. Beckford. That's why I was saying, sorry to cut you off there. Um, that's why I was saying to you that it's so important to have that introductory press conference. You need to have that press conference where it's just simple, simply about Lauren Donaldson being introduced to the media. And because he's introduced to the media, he's also introduced to the 12th man as well. Because this is what you need to know. Like, I can't give you the answers. Only thing I can do is give you a, um, my assumption my opinion likewise you can't give me the answers and you're based in jamaica so how ridiculous is that i should actually be able to like call you and be like okay how is things looking in jamaica as it relates to lauren donaldson have you heard anything is he the permanent head coach yes no but neither one of us knows and we're following the the, the reggae girls like it's our shadow yeah and thanks to you um i would say you're a best to to the fans and jamaica <laughs> thanks to you, we are keep up to date. It's like um, you're you're in JFF office, but you're not. Um, <laughs> I don't I don't even think they would want me in their office, but thank you, I appreciate it. Because it's from you we learn many. Um, no, keep up to date with the girls. What is that? Um, JFF didn't announce this friendly. It's from you that I found out that um, we had friends um arranged. So. They need to do their part, and the fans are, are the ones that are always left out. But thanks to you, we are in the know. Okay, now, thank you guys for your support, because like I said um, so many times before, um, there's times where I just don't even have the energy to come and do the live stream. But every time I come on here, you guys are always in the comment section, always engaging with the content and just giving me that energy that I need to just um, feed you guys the information or share my opinion with you guys. So it's uh, it's like a game of football. It's not um it's not just a, a one person's game. Yes, I am providing you guys with information, but you guys are also um doing your part as well to bring exposure to the to the content. So thank you guys for your support. Yeah, you're welcome, man. We no one can say that the enjoy the show. I always enjoy the show. I'm sure others can share this sentiment. <laughs> and I realize most of the time you don't want to end. Yeah, it's difficult. It, it is like I already said tonight it was going to be short. I always say it's going to be a short show, and that means 30 minutes, but I always go over 30 minutes, and sometimes I go over an hour. I've already gone over the um one hour um mark but yeah that's because you guys in the comment section makes it difficult to to leave. Um do you think Taylor Hines 
that's an excellent question. I love your question. But considering that um, Taylor Hines won promotion with Liverpool when they were in the second tier of women's football in England, and now they are up to the WSL, the first tier, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, it's a tough one. I can try and find the answer for you, but it is tough because she will be looking at um, her options, won't she? So it is tough. I don't know. Maybe yes. Maybe Potterford would say that yes, I would want to um play for Jamaica. I would say to someone like Taylor Hines is based on the makeup of Jama Jamaica as it relates to representation and diversity, she would fit in like a missing puzzle. If it's talking about another country, maybe she should hold her horses, but maybe that's just me um being a little bit biased, but I don't know. Um, that was a comment. Um, someone's asking me about uh, Taylor Hines. Miss Panton asking about Taylor Hines. Um, I hope I've answered your question. Uh, wouldn't mind seeing her play for Jamaica, but I don't have a clue if she wants to play for Jamaica. Is she a decent player? Yeah, she's um she. One could argue and say that she's the face of Liverpool, Liverpool woman, that is. So that is somebody for you to um, uh, keep an eye on. I don't like to focus heavily on players where I can't put the nail on the head, where, where I can't figure out whether or not you would play for Jamaica. I, I don't really like to focus heavily on you because um, I'd rather just focus on the players that's in the talent pool or players that definitely would say, yeah, they would give um, Jamaica the, the green light. But Heinz has already played for England at the youth level. Who's to say um, she might play for England in the senior team? But um, that remains to be seen. Well, um, until she decides, we're looking to her again. Yeah, would yeah, welcome her with open arms, but players have to go with what? suits them best in terms of environment um where they feel culturally connected because that's something that we mustn't neglect as fans I think sometimes we get caught up in the moment and as soon as a player is um eligible to play for Jamaica or it's been made um clear that they are eligible to play for Jamaica people are like bring them in especially if they play in England but you have to ask yourself this question and this has nothing to do with Taylor Hines just generally speaking you have to ask yourself how cultural are, are they connected to the culture you have to ask yourself about the authenticity of the player and whether or not they will fit in like a missing puzzle um yeah how well connected are they with their Jamaican heritage or their Jamaican culture what do they know about Jamaica what what would it mean to don the black um green and gold yes and we want to see those things we want to know that um when up there is um when players are are introduced um sometimes better we it's better we are in doubt as to so say um, where were they born? Because if, if they were most in England, they come and they speak in Obatwa. Um, basically, the enthusiasm I want to see. But um, it, it's yet to be seen yet. Because most of the time, and in this interview, you can tell where were they um, originally. Uh, but if a player is not enthused about a certain culture, um, they are not going to show much interest. Because most of the time, if you would want to play for a country, you will most of the time introduce yourself or market yourself in a way where people are seeing you and they see that you will want to play for Jamaica. Yeah, you've you've uh, you've um you've raised um a good point. And also I'm not I'm not interested in being overly persuasive with players wanting to play for Jamaica. Um I feel like if a player wants to play for Jamaica, they will play for Jamaica. There's nothing that an England can do to persuade them or a Germany or a Scotland or a Spain. If they want Jamaica, they will commit themselves to Jamaica. Um, so I'm not really into overly persuading a player to play for us. I'm not going to get down on my knees and beg you to come and play for Jamaica. That is for sure. Once I knock on your door once or twice, and you're still prolonging the conversation or making me or telling me that I have to come back and speak to you, I'm not interested because there's someone there that can take your position. Um, so, yeah, um, it, it'd be interesting to see what qualifies a player to play for us outside the fact that they are eligible to play for Jamaica and outside of their talent, what other tick box need to be checked. 
um, before you can say, let's bring them into the fold. Because I'd like to think that it goes beyond talent. Talent alone isn't good enough when you're playing for a country like Jamaica, in my opinion. You have to have that cultural connection with your with your um country and that is how you can um form a bond with your teammates you have to be culturally connected if you're not culturally connected i couldn't care less if you're renaldino i don't want you in the team if you don't know what it yeah. means to breed to bleed black gold and green i don't want you nowhere near the team because next thing what's going to happen is when it's time for breakfast and you often see when they're eating their breakfast, they eat traditional Jamaican food. So your ackee, your salt fish, your yam, dumpling, um, probably bami, whatever. I don't want you telling me that you don't want that. You want to go and eat eggs and beans or full English or full American because you're going to starve to death because I'm not feeding you. You're starving to death. <laughs> God bless you. You're going to turn into the past tense if I'm the chef. Because you're going to eat what I, what we eat in camp. So it goes beyond the whole, um, are they good to play for Jamaica? Yeah, that's a given. Why would you even call up a player if they're not talented, if they're not good enough, if they're not of, of a certain standard? The team as it is, is has high quality. So if you're not looking for players of said quality, it doesn't even make sense to talk to them. So the talent... Talent shouldn't even come into question because that's a given. You should be saying, do they have a connection with their country? If they don't have a connection, then you have to check their upbringing. And one way of checking their upbringing is checking their parents. Do their parents have a connection with um with their with their um country and so on? And then you make your decision. Yeah, it, it, I prefer know that you you go ahead um under the radar about your passport and have it ready and ready to go just waiting on the call yeah that's that's the level enthusiasm i want to see from overseas and uh, foreign that have um jamaican heritage 100 percent. 100 percent. the thing about it if you're not in tunes in your game you're you're going it's not it's like you're playing but you're just playing you're not going to play to to um, give it a haul or try yeah, to yeah, yeah. uplift the team with your quality. And that shines through. That shines through because you can't, you can't, you can't um, imitate that. It can't be something. It's a bit like purity. People sense purity. People will sense if you really and truly want to play for Big Bam Jamaica because it will be certain little things that you slip up on, such as your mannerisms, so your focus when you're in the game. If you're one nail down and the camera pans on you on your on the bench, do you have a smile on your face or do you have on your game face? It's little things like that that you will slip up on. Um, so yeah, for me, um, talent is a given. You're not going to be bringing in, or you shouldn't bring in a player into the team if they are not talented. It does. It's a waste of time because you know that that player will be um exposed at some point or another because their teammate is of high standards. The person to their left of them and the, to the to the right of them is of a high standard. So if you come through the ranks or if you come through the doors, now that we have qualified and you are mediocre. You're doing yourself a disservice because it will shine through. Yeah, very well said. So that's all. And not everyone's going to agree with me because I've had this conversation. I know some people are like, they don't really care about stuff like that. Once they're good enough to play, they should play. But I'm not really into that. Um, like I said, talent is a given. But if you don't bleed black, gold and green, I don't want you in the team. You have to be connected to your culture. You have to know what it means to be Jamaican. You have to know what it means to want to play for Jamaica. Because um, if you go against that, you are putting yourself in an uncomfortable position when you link up with the, your other teammates and your other teammates are so um, cultured. Like, for example, a I use a player as a um, reference, like a... Uh, let's see a past player so like a Nicole McClure um, so she was the goalkeeper that stood between the sticks in 2018 in the decisive penalty shootout and we can use a current player like your um, Tiffany Cameron those are two players um, you can say past and present who clearly um, born inside the, um, the diaspora, one born in the United States, the, the other born in Canada. But those are two players that have bought into their culture and you can see it. 
that they they fully believe their culture they are they are jamaican there's no two ways about it doesn't matter if they're born in canada or born in um the united states they are jamaican they, they are jamaican there's no front in there you can see it and um even when they're off season and that's one of the, the most beautiful things about social media when these players are off season and they're cooking their um traditional um jamaican dish or even um festive season another player who does it well is um mariah gray as well these are some of the things that you can't hide from marla sweatman does it as well you cannot hide from stuff like that so people want to see your culture i can't speak for every person there is as it relates to the 12th man but i want to see the culture i want to see who really wants to play for jamaica don't tell me you're talented because I wouldn't even be looking at you if you weren't talented anyway. So don't tell me that you're talented. That's a given. And and, and you have to have talent to be in, in um, the regular team. Because exactly. <laughs> exactly. But people don't want to hear certain stuff like that. They, you know, they they say that they have this odd obsession with players that play in England. I don't have a clue why there's an obsession with English players who... Um, can to an extent call England their home. I don't know what the obsession is about players who either can call England their home through um birthplace or because they play in England. There's there's I feel like there's a favoritism there um with players who either are born in England or either play in England. I don't know what it is. Um, but it's an it's a weird one. Good evening, you guys in the comment section. I'm not ignoring you. The date, Mr. Rockford, is September the 3rd. Kickoff time, well, good question. Um, Kickoff time is, it says the game is scheduled to begin at 3 a.m. Um, Jamaica time, 5 p.m. local. Um, but it's a little bit confusing, isn't it, from the press release? So I'm going to find some clarity for you and let you know. But the game will be played on this coming Saturday against south korea three days later on the 6th of september the girls have a practice match against said country see what you guys are saying in the comments section what time is the game Africa just covered that one um no 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 game tonight um need to find some clarity on that one there for you miss Patton. Mr. Porter, how are you? Dre, any with the sports? Mr. Chelsea, how are you doing? But I disagree with you on being biased on that issue. What do you disagree with? I've said quite a lot. Um, you're not going to get me to change my mind on what I've just said, by the way. There's no way that anyone can tell me that it is all right for us to call up a player that isn't connected to their culture. What's the point? Get Wilson on the show on the weekend, please. I would take Tiffany for her itself. Um, I could try for you. To be honest with you, um, I'm gonna have to hold um I'm gonna have to hold fire on your request. Um, so I know you're saying you'd like um wilson on the show but i've got this thing where i don't like to i don't like to reach reach out to players when they're in camp i like them to just have their moment in camp and do just focus on their football i don't like to bring them on the show whilst they're in camp but i can try and get this done for you at some point um yeah i'll try and um i hope that's okay with you i'll try and um get this um done for you and when I do eventually get around to it, if it happens, then I'll give you a little nudge and you can check it out for yourself. Welcome to Jamaica, Siobhan Wilson. Andrew Spre Spence, I trust what you said a while ago. What did I say? You're going to have to um, remind me. I've said a lot. Are you talking about where I said that players... Um, are you talking about the authenticity of the players? Is that what you're referring to? Where I said that it talent is a given? You're going to have to um elaborate on that for me. Um, yes, Mr. Beckford. Anything else that you'd um like to add to the show? Um, well, I'm saying look at Tiffany, for example. Um, 
there, if, if you don't know her background, you probably didn't know that she switched allegiance because she's so into the culture and so excited to mm-hmm. be a Jamaican. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So someone so start spirit I want because when, when that happens, you you will gel in with the spot easily. Yes, hundred percent. We already feel at home. Hundred percent. You don't have to come into camp and people try to persuade you to buy into the culture. Camp is not the place for you to be persuaded to buy into your culture. It's a bit too late for that. You should have already been bought into your culture, be it upbringing or somewhere else. Um, so yeah. Island Court, you can't just end it like that. You're going to have to elaborate. Tell me why you disagree. And tell me if you were going to call up someone to represent Jamaica, what would be your criteria? What's your criteria? What's your what's your checklist? Um, let me know. For example, I realize with some players, when they play for their country and their club, it's totally too different. Exactly. I'm going to hold, um, stick a pin in it for a quick second there, uh, Mr. Beckford, before you continue, because this actually timed it beautifully. Um, Irie Vibes, good evening to yourself. Irie Vibes said patronism doesn't win when when you football matches commitment and exactly so how do you expect someone to be committed if they have not bought into the culture how many times um let's put the um, reggae girls to the side for one second how many times does it relate to the reggae boys where you've had to question players commitment and how who are those players where are those players originally from how do those players get to play for jamaica through what heritage so this is what I am saying to you, that when you talk, the key word from your comment, Mr. Irie Vibes, is commitment. You expect somebody to be committed to the cause if they do not have a connection with your culture? Surely that doesn't make sense to you because that makes zero sense to me. So you're going to have to try and um, add some clarity to that one for me because I don't see how somebody can be committed to something when they're not um, connected to it. No, I just don't see how that can happen. But Mr. Beckford, I'm um, sorry to um cut you off. No, it's okay. I mean, you still have to pay attention to the comments section. Did you did you hear that um last comment there? Yes, I, I heard what he said. Um, I understand the point that he's trying to bring across, but at the same time, opinion varies and your opinion might not be his opinion so it's just a part of the discussion yeah yeah you know it's like i said i've had this conversation time and time again and i'm not going to be swayed guys but you know as i've always said to you guys football is a game of opinions i revives island cut big up yourself you guys are going to have a different of opinion not just you guys we're all going to have difference of opinion because football is a game of opinion um and i'm i'm quite comfortable with that i can um i can um accept that but i'm not going to um say that i want someone to play for my for my country if they're not culturally connected to the country why you you put yourself at okay so guys Say Jamaica never kickstart. It's not going to happen, but say that Jamaica never kickstart the Women's Premier League. Say it never happens again, right? How do you keep that? Or how do you main, maintain that authenticity that's currently in the, the reggae girl squad? How do you maintain it? Because authenticity is important. If you want to inspire little girls in Jamaica up and down every single parish there is, the, the, the squad has to be authentic. And authentic means, like I said, I've given you two examples of two players who are born outside of Jamaica but are authentic. So your Nicole McClure or your um, Tiffany Cameron. How do you maintain that authenticity if players haven't bought into your culture? You remove it. It gets removed whether it's by intent or whether you do it intentionally or unintentionally. You end up removing it in the long run. So that's why I say that. Um players have to be connected with their culture there's no point saying um talent talent is only going to be getting you so far because they always say that without hard work your talent is pretty much nothing right and to have hard work you have to have commitment so that's a given that's a given i'm not going to be looking at you if you're not talented and if you're not committed 
And and we need that blend in the squad because if, if there is no blend there will there will be an imbalance. Because um sometimes people have lost their identity. But if you're in a squad where you have born Jamaican players and um Jamaican players from that group, that grew up in other countries, then it will always um have the right blend in a team that you need. Um often time we are so in use of open foreign base that's yeah. um, is a point that I want to bring across. But what I realize is that sometimes um their their commitment is questionable because if you really want to play, you're gonna make yourself available. Mm-hmm. Not even the manager can stop you because I know they do they, their league is important. Yes, but representing your country is just as important as your league. Yeah, and it's that's what Paul that, Hall said. Paul Hall said, anybody who wants to play for Jamaica will play for Jamaica. Nothing can stop them. Because sometimes England tried um, the Federation and so on. Over there, struck with their team. They don't like mm. to make it easier for other players that represent other country, which mm. is something that I don't like about um, with, with what they are doing. Because you shouldn't be in the middle when it comes to play on their commitment to their country. Hundred percent, and you should step aside. Step aside. I I just hope they address it, but at the same time, if you really want to play, you're going to make yourself available. And when you make yourself available, want to see that beast mode, because sometimes players are looking back on stranded when they play for the club. They are beast. You're saying, "Oh my gosh, is that the same player?" No, I can't believe. Um, I've seen it happen before. Yeah. Yeah. Why? And when they get bashing from the fans, you know, people are saying this and that. It's not about the fact that they're playing in a big league or whatever. We want to see that performance transform into the um the bashing when you're playing for a country. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, and you know, it's it's a point that I think is worth considering because historically um speaking there's always been it might not be as apparent now but it's if it, it lingers around there's always been like this distrust with players coming into the the team who were born overseas there's always been like this little resentment i don't know what um birthed that resentment but there's been historically speaking there's been that resentment probably not has um harsh as it was back then but there's been resentment um in the past historically speaking um let me just address um a comment you said you would not look at player if she is talented so you don't know nothing about jamaica and what i disagree with you what you say you would if she does know nothing about jamaica and what is that it's not you don't get educated when you come to the national setup. You should be educated from birth. That is your parents' job. It's not the job of Lauren Donaldson or Khadija Buddy Shaw to educate you about Jamaica. You must be kidding me. You should be educated about your heritage and your culture from birth. That's from birth. That's how the culture keep that's how you keep the culture alive. It's down to you to educate your child about Jamaica. Whether you live in Jamaica or not, it is down to you to educate your child about Jamaica. When I have my kids, it is down to me to educate my kids, whether I have kids in Jamaica or in England or wherever else in the world. It's down to me to educate my kids. That's not down to someone else. So to say that um, we have to educate them, which we are you referring to? Because I know you're not saying it's down to the Federation to educate them. That's not the Federation's responsibility. That's your parents' responsibility to educate you. It's your parents' responsibility. Yes, I know that now. Um, probably always been um, going, taking trips to um, to Jamaica. It must have always been expensive. I know it's expensive now. It costs the arm and the leg. Um, but it, yeah, try and get to Jamaica. Try and get yourself to Jamaica. If it's even for one or two a week, embrace your culture. Do you expect the Jamaica Football Federation to send these girls on one week, two week holiday to Jamaica to educate them? Must be having a laugh. You must, You have to educate yourself. Take ownership sometimes. Take ownership sometimes. And you got to listen. When I say stuff, you got to listen. You can't hear what you want to hear and then make an assumption because I've not said to you that I want the women's team to reflect the men's team. If anything, I've always tried to prevent 
th this from happening if you have been paying attention to the um my live stream so you got to listen to what i'm saying and don't listen and hear what you want to hear but listen and hear what i'm actually saying whether or not it upsets you or not, that's besides the point. Because sometimes I read comments that I don't agree with, but I'm not going to let that um, create clouded judgment. So whether or not you agree with my point, don't let that um, cloud your, your opinion. Don't let that cloud your eardrums. Actually listen to what I'm saying and then address address my, my um, opinion, whether you agree with it or not. Address it if you must. I'm happy to sit here and read your comment, but please don't tell me that I've said something when I haven't said it, or please don't try and put words into my mouth. I don't like that. So please don't do that. I can guarantee that the majority of players who are local born will have more determination. And I can guarantee that the majority of players who are local born, I disagree. I disagree because with the local players, they're, they're a whole different um, dynamics. One, you have to talk about the professional aspect of these players. You have to talk about their professionalism. You still have to talk about their dedication, their commitment, and their mannerisms. First and foremost, you have to look at their professionalism because it's far too me, me, me. There's far too many me, me. That's why I, I now, 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 nowadays I don't really touch on men's football as I did um, some years ago because it's too divided. There's too many me and not enough we. There's too many eyes and not enough T's. And I'm not really interested in that. I've seen, I've seen Jamaican born players sit on their social media and laugh at their teammates who are losing in a World Cup qualifiers. Those are Jamaican-born players. So what does that tell you about their attitude, their professionalism, and their mindset? Remember, guys, I keep telling you, if you don't want to hear objectivity, stay away from my platform because I'm not here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm just here to give you my opinion. My opinion is not going to be facts, but I'm here to give you that objectivity. But if you don't want the objectivity, just stay away from the platform. It's not a case of saying um, I'm on side of Jamaican born players. I'm on side of whoever is fighting for the black, gold and green. I'm on side of any, with anyone who is a professional, both on the field of play and off the field of play. If that happens, to, at the end of the day, once you put on that Jamaican jersey, you are one. There's none of this or oh, this player is. I've seen in um where players are referred to as... Uh, the English one or the Canadian one or the USA one or whatever it might be, but it's it's I don't really look at it like that. I'm just saying to keep that authenticity going, you have to make sure that the players who you call up are authentically pleasing. They know what it means to represent Jamaica. Uh, I, I, yeah, but it doesn't matter. And you know who I'm referring to. And there's been more cases like that. It's interesting that you know who I'm referring to, but that is where it all starts. That is where it all starts. So imagine what happens when you make your way into the senior team. If you don't nip it at the bud, it will fester and it will just, it will creep its way into the senior team. That is where it doesn't matter. It doesn't, and any serious coach would look at that situation and say, I'm going to have to take disciplinary action. You're not playing for the team for this next string of games. You're not bigger than the team. You're laughing at your teammates because they are losing and you are laughing. Yes, you can say there's a, there's a lack of maturity there, but then you have to look at the people around the player and say, what are you teaching this player? Because that can't happen again. <laughs> Do you want to call in? If you want to call in, you can you can definitely call in. Um, by the way, in case you're new to the show, um, the caller that's on the line, he's a regular. So that's the reason why um, he's on the call. But if you want to call in, you can call in. So far, nobody has called in because if someone had called in, it would have it was uh, it would have shown up on my screen, but it hasn't shown up on the screen. Um, I was I was so make way for him to call. <laughs> um it's actually um a lady i don't actually think she wants to call in um um i don't think i can't speak for her but i don't actually think but like i said nobody has tried to call in because the it hasn't shown up on my screen there's been no um message on my screen okay well you, you mentioned a point um you bring up a point that I want to say something about 
the, the fact that um, the incident with the players decide losing and you're laughing uh, those things um cause those things can cause different that I noticed there are too many divisions in, in the reggae boy squad and those things are affecting affecting the player performance. Um where they are this differentiating themselves to say overseas, local, based. Yes. We don't want to know. Um, that is not important. We are talking about the regular boys. We are talking about the regular girls. And what I realize is that um, the players are not going to go on social media and bash. The regular girls haven't seen an incident where they are going on social media. And I'm sure everybody has social media, you see, unless they are in the it's the age where people still are what is. Um, but everybody has it and use it. And mm-hmm. I'm not seeing them bashing um, their, their, their fellow um, players. Look at Tiffany. When Tiffany was old, she was there cheering on the girls. Exactly. Even they are um, doing so well. Exactly. That's, that's, that's the kind of commentary we want to see. Uh, players are saying this and that about that place. And those things are not going to, um, that is like going backward. And also, the, the coach has to be careful because he can even cause division among the players. Because if you are in an interview and you address the, the players as local base, overseas base, and the players are the regular ones, they, there will be a division. Mm-hmm. And those things are it's affecting this regular boys team over the years and it's our recent play. But um, we are not seeing that from the and we must come in the level of professionalism and preference, having a preference, um, preferential player always going to have a problem. And we as fans need to realize that even if it doesn't matter if they are local base or overseas base, and the day it's about who come out to work, who plays, um, who bring their A game in matches. If if an overseas base players play five consecutive matches and I mean five or ten are giving them ten as a benchmark, I think that ten they only have one good game. I would never recommend that player over player that have eight good games out of ten. I would start that player because it's about um the effort shown in matches as time goes by. Don't because you're overseas or you're local or you're the best out here. Mr. Beckford, you've you've got yourself in trouble in the comment section. You know, I don't know if I can defend you. <laughs> well, um, it's my opinion. Um, no, as, it's as not I... your it's not your opinion that's got you in trouble. Um, you've got yourself in trouble in the comment section. Um. <laughs> what what are they saying? Uh, I'm not. Oh, Miss Panton. Um. At least you've made me laugh. At least you've definitely um made me laugh. Um, so guys, if you want to call in, you can actually call in. Um, it's not going to interfere with the call. And if I see the call, I will answer it. Trust me. Um, I probably should have said that earlier on in the show. Just because I'm on a call, that don't let that stop you from calling in. You can always, always um call in or drop me a message, and I will call you back. All right. But uh yeah, Mr. Beckford, you've got yourself in trouble with um Sabrina in the in the comment section. Well 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 mature me can't. <laughs> no, it's not it's not your comment. She doesn't have a problem with your with your comment. Okay. I guess um well I don't know what is it then? I'm not in the comment section, no. Oh, um, I think I think she's saying that she wanted to come on, but she I don't know, maybe she thought that because um you're on the call that um she couldn't call in. But anyone can call in, guys. Um whether I'm on the call or not, you can definitely um call in. I'll see it and I will either pick up or call you back, but I won't keep you waiting. So Sabrina, I apologize. I apologize about that, Sabrina. Um, if I knew that you was trying to call in, um, I would have added you to the call. All right. Um, so sorry. I'm going to give them the opportunity, and I will see. And I will see if anyone going to call. Since uh, <laughs> I'm going 
going to see to that. I'm going to rejoin <laughs> the dogs and see if anyone will come. Listen, yeah, I'm going to be holding um Miss Panton to it for um, maybe not tonight, as she said. I think she's changed her mind, but maybe not tonight, but in the future. Um, Sabrina, Rochelle, Hot Chili. Where's Tasia? I know he's here in the comment section somewhere. Mr. Scott, I'm going to be holding you guys to that. So, Mr. Beckford, it was nice hearing from you. Um, enjoy the rest of your evening, okay? Okay, same to you. Okay, <laughs> take it. You too. Take care. So, Sabrina, um, again, sorry about that. Um, my apologies. But um, if you guys want to join me on the live stream, you're more than welcome to. Um, all you have to do is just click on this link. I don't really have much rules, guys. My only golden rule is to just show respect to the guys in the comment section and also to the players and the backroom staff as well. And even the JFF, I know it's hard at times, especially when emotions is in, involved. But yeah, just try to show um, respect to each other. And that's it. I don't really have um, much rules to go with. Um, all right, let me write down. Um, so it is. I'm going to be closing off uh, maybe in the next 20 minutes or so, guys. So if anyone wants to join me, you're more than welcome to. If you're just tuning in. The headline reads for itself. It says Reggae Girls All Set for South Korea Friendly. And that match is scheduled to be played on the 3rd of September. So in two days' time, I'm already into the 1st of September. I can't believe it. We're in September already. Oh, wow. And then three days later on September the 6th, the Reggae Girls will be playing against South Korea in a practice match. I miss your um, comment, right? I just saw it um somewhere else. Sorry about that, Ryan. So I can see it in the actual comment section on YouTube, if that makes sense, but I can't actually see it in the back end. So you know the bit that we control, Ryan. I can't see it here. So that's why I haven't um that's why I didn't see it initially. But when I go over to YouTube and look at the video as it's um live. I can see your comment section, so um, good night to yourself. Why are you up? Do you not have work in the morning? I have a meeting in the morning, a matter of fact, but I'll I'll be all right. I'll be good to go. I'm gonna give you guys um just under twenty minutes, and then I'm going to close off. It's already six past one here in London. <laughs> a couple of your comments have made me laugh tonight um that's for sure <laughs> oh god you guys are funny so there you go sabrina you've got yourself a um apology Island card, I revived. I'm still waiting on you guys' um opinions. I was enjoying the um the conversation. Where you guys go? Um You know what guys? I just hope that we can actually um do a live watch along on Saturday. Um Started starting to remind me of the good old days when it was a struggle to watch reggae girls games. I'm hoping that we're not going to be um, going down that road on Saturday. Hopefully not. The next show. Um, the next show is. It's a very good question. 
It depends. If anything new comes out on the Reggae Girls, then it will be Thursday. If not, the next show will be on Thursday, um, Friday, followed by Saturday. So I could give you a another show tomorrow, meaning Thursday. Um, I'm already into my Thursday. If, if, if I get any um, updates on the Reggae Girls, because I don't want to just sit here and talk nonsense to you guys eventually you guys will um log off i did sir i did start you know how it goes mr scott i start and i just can't stop i say i always say 30 minutes and then look at the time it's almost two hours and i'm still here <laughs> you guys um, I would call him, but my headphones are broken. Have you seen the female features and the FIFA where you could play like most of the leagues now? You might have to send me a um, send me a link, Theo, even if it's on um, on Instagram. Uh, one second, Sabrina. <laughs> Better late than never, Mr. Scott. Um, okay. All right, guys. Um, this is so comfortable. Oh my god! All right, I've got maybe five more minutes with you guys. Maybe five more minutes, and then I am going to um end the show until I'm gonna say friday because i don't think anything's gonna come out then again let me not hold my breath i might see you guys um on thursday because with our federation anything is possible <laughs> mr beckford apply the pressure i'm with you on this one i'm with you on this one mr beckford it makes sense doesn't it I know I figured you are either at work or you didn't see the, the live stream. So, guys, Mr. Scott has promised this season that he's going to call in. Matter of fact, he said he's coming on live stream. Um, so plenty of you will be able to put a face to the name. Apparently, this don't hold your breath though, guys, but this season apparently. Uh, Mr. Scott is coming on our live stream, but don't hold your breath, like I said. He has tendency to behave like a certain federation. Uh, I'm not going to call no names, but I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> I'm sleeping. <laughs> Oh, gosh. I, at least you're in the comment section, so I appreciate the support. <laughs> Have you not seen Lauren Donaldson's um, comments? Have you not taken... You haven't been listening to Lauren, Lauren Donaldson's comment? Let me just play it for you. This trip is just about getting some new players in with some, some of the old veterans and um, we're trying to narrow it down. And this is one of the windows that we're going to use to try to narrow down um, our squad for the World Cup and looking at some players and um, hopefully we have some success with this. But again, it's going to be hard competition. People are fighting for spots. So using these windows efficiently as possible for our players, new players and older players and everybody competing to make the World Cup team. So coach, um, have you gotten, have all the players been in and what has it been so far since your arrival? Well, you know, every, everybody's here, you know, which is good, which is, 
maybe the first time we have gotten everybody in on time. I think, I mean, traveling wise, I can say it's been very, very, very efficient. This is just the first leg, okay? Hopefully the second leg of the travel, when we leave here, it can be just as good because I'm smiling now because for the first time, I think we have got everybody in on time. Okay, coach. So, um, thanks, and we'll talk to you as the event goes on. Thank you, and hopefully we can play hard and get some results. Thanks, coach. When we leave here, it can be just as good. It can be very, very, very efficient. This is just the first leg, okay? Hopefully the second leg of the travel, when we leave here, it can be just as good, because I'm smiling now, because for the first time, I think we have got everybody in on time. Okay, coach. So, um, thanks, and we'll talk to you as the event goes on. Thank you. And hopefully, we can play hard. And so, yeah, Mr. Scott, that's what your gaffer had to say. Again, I'm laughing because he's probably alluding to travel arrangements, so the logistical side of the planning, the whole itinerary. I'm pretty sure he doesn't want a repeat of what happened where Bunny Shaw um, had to pay for luggages and so on so that's probably what he's um referring to um so yeah lauren donaldson has a few sucker punch in him and he's definitely not afraid to um dish out a few if it's um aimed at the jff from what i can gather from the man himself so um um I think that brought the show to an end, guys. Let me check my notes quickly to see. I don't think there's anything. Um... Somehow, we've actually managed to um tick everything off my list just by randomly um speaking at you guys. It is a unique surname, isn't it? That's what I was thinking. Did I even pronounce it right? Panton, Panton. I think it's pronounced um Panton. I'm not sure, um, but I think it's pronounced Panton. But it is a unique surname. I'm with you on that. Um, did you ask what? He need to be even better play. I haven't actually I haven't um spoken to the the Don yet. Good evening, Mr. Webster. Where's my manners? How are you? <laughs> Mr. Spurs, how are you? Um, we haven't had the, the press conference with the Don yet, so I actually managed to ask many questions. Um Seems like he's got a plan though, right? Definitely seems like he's got a plan. And a um, couple pictures um, of the girls there in camp that I should have shown to you guys earlier on. So let's go ahead and go for a couple pictures. You guys should have seen the welcome return there for a couple players. So your Tiffany Cameron, your Marlo Sweatman, your uh, Siobhan Wilson, Shania Hales, uh, Giselle Washington. A couple new additions brought into the fold um, in terms of the senior team, that is. Um, so you would have seen, was she there in the, I think she was there. Um Let's see, let's go back and look, see if I can bring that up on my screen. I just managed to um remove it, but let's see if I can get it back up on my screen. Um, One second there, guys. Mm, bear with me. I don't know why I actually, um, that was a quick um movement of the um hands and I just managed to um remove something from my screen so let's let me airdrop it back onto my screen for you guys quickly um 
I'm pretty sure I did see her in the first picture. So let's go back. So yeah, you'd have seen Brooks right through the middle there, our young goalkeeper. So you'd have seen um Brooks, uh Leah Brooks, that is. And clearly you can see again a couple of the um new additions additions there, guys. So your Atkins and your um Simmons as well. Cameron Simmons and Malia um, We have come to the end of the live stream, guys. Is that a mosquito? It amazed me the things that you see in England these days. You never used to see them flying about. Matter of fact, you never used to see them at all. That looked like a mosquito to me. Um, okay. Right, so let's see what you guys are saying. Final comments before I close. Man of God, it's happened again. I'm about to close off as soon as you come on. It's a complete um, coincidence. All right, the best parish is from St. Thomas. Most of my family by his side live in the UK. The best parish there is. Um, I think JFF is going to try and hang the coach with some of his comments. I mean, it will be petty. He's not said nothing wrong. He's not said nothing wrong at all. you got to appreciate trying... Then again, when you don't offer transparency and someone comes along and they're giving transparency, I can see why you want to shut them down. So, yeah, you might have um, struck a point there. You might have um, struck a point. Man of God, how are you? The ring thing, right thing, him do, him smart. If him not ready, we don't care about some of the fans that are going to vex with him. To the baller who got the right go to the World Cup. Yeah, he's um he's testing out a few, isn't he? Um, and the likes of Simmons, they've um they've been around. Atkins been around. We know Brooks been around. So you don't have to question um their authenticity because they are authentic. They've been in the pipeline. This is nothing new to them. It's a step up, um, but it's nothing new to them. So. Like so many other players that we've seen in the past, these girls that's coming into the fold, um, they should fit in like a missing puzzle. Undefeated, but looking at your team, they are looking good. London is red again for now. Wow, I can't believe he's saying that. Somebody must have... No, it can't be Warren that's um in the comment section. Surely not. Big up all the reggae girls worldwide. Worldwide. Um, you have my love and admiration. All the best ladies. That's a lovely comment, Mr. Warren. I can't believe you've actually said that. London is red for now. I, I might have to take a screenshot of that moment. I like your parish. The hills are beautiful overlooking the sea. Absolutely. The best parish in Jamaica. I know some of you are not going to um, agree with me. That's fine. You don't have JFF don't like a coach there they can't push around. It's to respect for itself, doesn't it? I'm good, just coming off. Thank God you've um made it home safe and sound. I'm well. I can't complain. I've got a meeting to look forward to in some hours' time. I uh, can't complain. Saint Anne. All let's say all the saint, Mr. Webster, so that we can be on the um same page for one. Saint Anne is the best, no cap. What Saint Thomas have to do have that we <laughs> why is Warren always trying to beef me? Mr. Webster, what have I done? Why you're always trying to beef me? Um if it makes you happy, if it floats it floats your boat. Um you don't know about the best best parish? Is making me even cough. Um, the best parish is um Saint Thomas. Don't let nobody tell you any different. Even Warren, okay. 
Okay, how are you? St. Thomas people are progressive people, most of whom I know are hardworking and positive, heavy on the positive, unlike certain people in the comments section. I'm not going to name no name. Um, all right, guys, let's call it two more minutes. <laughs> Warren, mind how you're talking, you know, Warren. Man, while you're talking about my parish, Mr. Webster, let's give ourselves maybe two more minutes, guys, and then I'm going to um close off. And I'm going to be coming back, um, if not Thursday, then Friday. And also, obviously, I'll be here with you guys on Saturday as well. I object with it being the... <laughs> You're entitled to do exactly that. You are entitled. I'm going to be sticking with my parish, you know. It's my parish of birth, so I'm going to stick with them. Um, I'm going to be closing off in under two minutes time, guys, before I forget my manners. Massive thank you to you guys there in the comment section. You are the ultimate 12th man. Can't do these live streams without you guys. Um, you guys are amazing. If you're making your way home from work, I hope that you make it home safe and sound. I don't know how you guys manage to draw me out all the time. I always say no more than 30 minutes. And as ever, I always go beyond 30 minutes. Um... <laughs> Best food I ever ate was in St. Thomas, Manish Water, Corrigot. And tell them again, okay, because it's like them not okay, so tell them again. <laughs> Warren, Warren put my parish dead, dead last. Warren's been beefing me for some unknown reason, guys. I don't ask me why, but he's been beating me. <laughs> Yeah, but it seems like it's taken more than 40 days and 40 nights, right? Um, It's ridiculous. It's a good idea, of course, but the length of time in which it's taken and uh, the mess that it's caused um, during the building process leading to completion. All the Lord knows when that um, road's going to, stretch of road's going to be completed. Hopefully before 2030 knowing how they operate um so guys i've um come to the end of my live stream sadly um so if i do not see you um let's come up that video um where's it got i don't see I can't believe my eyes. So, um, yeah, I agree with you there, Mr. Beckford. Blakey, Blake says, um, Blake says, guys, that, see what Blake is saying. Blake says that the game is going to be 4 a.m. Right, so let's head over to Google. Thanks for that, um, Blakey, because someone asked, it might have been Island Card or... Rockford, one of the guys asked, and I slipped my mind. Um, so thank you. I'm gonna that's the last thing I'm gonna do before I close off on the show. All right. Oh, you mean Webster? It would be my my only choice in the whole world. It's my top choice. <laughs> you will visit to come on full your belly and then when you're done you curse us out 
I'm going to tell them to set for you next time, Mr. Webster. All right. So um, let's turn off. Let me move my comments, my headline, I should say. And let's go over to remove from studio. Let's turn on the shared screen. Remember, guys, I am about six hours ahead of most of you. But you can find out the answer to this one for yourself. All you have to do is go over to Google and type in reggae girls and you will be able to look at their next fixture i am absolutely gobsmack 9 a.m this is telling me 9 a.m this is going to be the earliest stream i've ever done wow 9 a.m for the stream for the south korea versus jamaica has to get done ain't it which is actually not too bad because it means i get the rest of the saturday to do what i need to do and to potentially put my feet up. So 9 a.m. is the time. I can't believe that. What does it say over here? Nine a.m. Wow. Okay, so five p.m. local time. Uh, okay, now it makes sense. Five p.m. local time. Um, how does that even make sense? Why is it saying 5 p.m. local time, um, Jamaica? Doesn't make sense to me if I'm um, ahead of you guys. I'm confusing myself, guys. I need to um, try and um, figure that out. Let me remove this quickly and look back at that. I don't even know if this is the um, right time or not, guys. <laughs> I revived. You are, you are pulling my leg. Nice try there, mate. Nice try. Um, I think you know the answer to that, but for some reason you want to pull my leg, but I'm not in a pulling mood tonight, sir. Thank you very much. Um, you know better than to to ask me that type of question. One second, there, guys. Um, let me bring up this on screen quickly. It doesn't make sense. I I don't know. I'm confusing myself. I revived. You're trying to pull my leg early in the morning. I know you better than that. So I'm not even gonna bite. As hungry as I am, I'm not gonna bite whatever it is you're feeding me. Let's watch back that video of the girls before I um, click off. Yeah, Blakey, it has to be 3 a.m. Jamaica time. Maybe some, it's 5 p.m. local time to um, South Korea. It has to be 3 a.m. Because there's no way that I am watching a game at 9 a.m. But Jamaica is watching it at in the evening hours when I am ahead. So it must be um, 3 a.m. Jamaica time. You wait until... Warren, it sounds like you went and bought that Arsenal kit. But if you don't want to admit it, um, we're just going to keep that between ourselves. I will try my best to not miss any show because I want to hear Sabrina. <laughs> Listen, Sabrina's never called into the show, but Sabrina's promised to call it. All I do, I make promise. Sabrina promise. Mr. Scott promise. No phone, a promise. I think even Rochelle promises. Well, that's all I'm gonna do. Just promise, promise. But you guys ain't fooling me. Um, seeing and hearing is believing. So 
if I'm going to sit back and wait and see if you guys are men and women of your words. Are you a woman of your words? Are you a man of your words? Only time will tell. Even Arsenal. <laughs> oh, my God. Mr. Scott, I think I might save this one for Friday. We can talk about this one on Friday um, and see what's what. Um, I'm saying Friday because by Friday we should have like a final verdict on what's going on in camp. Uh, hopefully no one pick up any niggles. Um, and hopefully we have a fully fit squad available for match day selection. Um, so guys, I have come to the end of the show. <laughs> Warren, there was one earlier on, but it's a baby one. And I got rid of it. Yeah, there was a baby one earlier on and I got rid of it. All right, guys, I'm going to um, close up on the show. It's two hours and 20 minutes. I don't know how you guys got me talking for two hours and 20 minutes, but you do it all the time. Um, it's a skill that you guys have. I tell you this, you guys have a um, unique set of skills on you. So South Korea is ahead of the... Um, yeah, they should be ahead of us by nine hours. Um, They should be ahead of us by nine hours. So the 9 a.m. that's being shown on my screen is correct for um South Korea versus Jamaica. But we'll see. I'm gonna try and clarify those um timings there, guys, because if anything, Jamaica, you guys based in Jamaica should be having a earlier watch time than me for once. <laughs> it um it what do you call it? They call in, the spiders call in. They actually make guest appearance on like some people in the comment section, Mr. Scott. Miss Brown, Miss Panton, not calling no names though. And um, Warren, Warren used to call in guys, but Warren, Warren just cursed me out these days. He cursed me out and say all type of stuff. Um, now and again, so. <laughs> um, Tiffany is fully fit now because she was. Yeah, hopefully she stays that way, and the rest of the girls in the squad. Um, hopefully they stay that way. Anything can happen, but hopefully not on this occasion. Three little birds. Fun fact, the regular girls is the highest rank. Really? Well done, girls. Yeah, I've always said um, that we are the most diverse squad. Most certainly at the last World Cup, right? Um, and that is why we are the prize assets as it relates to... Um, Mm, football in Jamaica prize assets all day long for a number of reasons authentically pleasing on the eye unique makeup um so yeah I'm gonna bring the show to an end now I've said that a dozen times now it's time to actually um do exactly that if I don't see you guys between now and the end of the week I'm starting to lose my voice um, if I don't see you guys between now and the end of the week, I hope that you have a smashing week. Enjoy your Thursday, enjoy your Friday when it comes. Let your hair down if you can. And if I don't see you over the weekend, I'm not sure why you would do that because it will be match day. Remember, guys, Saturday is match day. I hope that when I'm doing my live watch along, that you guys are in the comment section with me. I'm gonna try, we're gonna try and come together as one and see. Um, if you will, if me and you can try and find a stream for the game together, right? Um, even if I have to listen in on the radio, just to give you guys some commentary, I will do exactly that. So have a lovely weekend when it comes. If I don't see you over the weekend, I hope you have a great weekend. Stay safe and take care of you and your family.
No, Mr. Beckford. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you for the support. I think me and you are going to um go in head to head with this conversation, Mr. I revives. I've I've got a feeling that we sit on the opposite side of the fence of this one. Um, but you have to be um you have to be connected to your culture. I don't see how you could um argue against that. You have to be connected to you to your culture. Um, match day or match night? Looks like it's going to be a match morning for me. What time will you be live on Friday? Good question, this. On Friday, I'm considering doing an earlier live stream. And hear me out. The only reason why I want to do <laughs> the only reason why I want to do an earlier live stream on Friday is because I want to be able to have a red stripe. And I can't, I can't, I don't um have a glass of wine or whatever before I do my live stream. So I want to be able to give you guys the live stream at a good time so that I can go and have my um my a red stripe or a glass of wine or something. Right. So that's what I'm aiming for an earlier live stream. Priorities, guys. Priorities on my Friday. Um, those countries have a lot of black players in the team. I I will. Um, good night, guys. Um, if you haven't had dinner yet, when you get around to having your dinner, have some for both of us. Um, take care of yourself. If you're new to the platform, please do go ahead and hit the subscribe button. And also go ahead and hit the like button. Feel free to watch this one back on replay. The headline reads for itself. Reggae girl set for South Korea, um, South Korea friendly. And... I'm gonna go you guys are something else all right guys thank you for your support so thank you for your continuous support i should say you guys are always here with me um take care have a lovely thursday and a smashing friday when it comes and if i don't see you over the weekend have a wonderful weekend until next time take care i'm john barnes and you're watching tarawa tv with crystal davis